Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Johnny. <laughs> it's our podcast about anything and everything off road. Take two. Uh, yeah. We have gone like deeper takes before, which is not good. So um, we'll we'll recap what we covered earlier eventually. So. <laughs> and I look like I look like I have a perm, uh, and and that background is me like twelve years ago with Sir Mix a Lot pointing at the butt of a uh, Lamborghini Aventador, <laughs> the big butt that he likes. So, dude, I was, I was talking to a guy the other day, and it's just you know fun, as fun conversations go. He was like, "Think about getting a Huracan." And I was just like, Cash. "Good, good for you." Yeah. I'm like, "I'm trying to find a Sienna. That's all we'll drive <laughs> with a hybrid." Like, but yeah, Huracan definitely. Yeah. I'm with him. I don't like seeing it. I'm with him. Yep. I, I just wanted the, the 32 MPGs. Nah, nah. You want a Huracan. Mm. <laughs> exactly. yes. I mean, it would make my my commute a little more entertaining. Or, or that, that new V the uh, V10 R8 rear wheel draft car that they just launched. Yeah, you know, that's actually, it's weird. So they, that's been out for a while. It was called the R8 Performance and it made 562 horsepower. And then now it's the R8 Performance GT, and it, they gave it 40 more horsepower. Um, wasn't there a GT before? Like in the first, wasn't there last gen? GT? La- last hey. gen. Okay. Was a, well, uh, yeah, there were, the last R8 was the R8 GT, I think. It's also confusing because the last AMG going for the last couple model years was the AMG uh, SLS GT or whatever. Wow. But yeah, <laughs> there were so many different versions of that GT. GTC yeah, but I but the, the, the R8, yeah, the R8 rear drive bitching, and then I I didn't look what tires they put on, but if they if they steal the tires off of the Lambo STO slash uh, Technica, like those have as much grip as having all wheel drive gives you, you know. So it's like, oh wow, Chris, there you go. Oh. That's a year round commuter. Well, you know, if it doesn't rain, <laughs> really good. I I, I did drive those tires in the rain though. No, no bueno. Like no, uh, in the rain. Okay, no grip in the rain. Yeah. Dude, I, was, I was looking at like $3,500 Priuses, but yeah, sure. Let's go R8. That'd be great. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, you only live once, right? <laughs> let's get on a Prius. Let's, let's get on a Prius. Prius. You got the fastest car in the snow. Oh. Never touch the Prius. No, but then you got a Prius. I, I would advise against Priuses. There's, there's other ways to get good gas mileage. Uh, probably what I'm going to do is just keep driving the Suburban and not buy anything else. Like, there you go. Save That's my money. So much. There you go uh yeah it's been a hot minute so we so we've done a show with uh ross he ross is back johnny has returned as well so it was kind of just a nice combination of everybody again um so ross has driven a ton of press cars since the last time he was here it's a massive list yep. one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, i think it's been a car for every week that i've been uh on on podcast paternity there, there are four, 14 here with two upcoming, and I'm yep. very jealous of at least one of the upcoming. But one, one of the ones you have upcoming, Johnny was telling us about how perfectly quiet and reasonable the Escalade V is. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you see that black Lamborghini Aventador? Uh, the Escalade V is much louder. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there's no way for it not to be loud, on, especially on startup. The startup is, is ludicrous. So this picture with uh, Mr. Mixel out there uh, was at Pebble Beach 12 years ago. I just went to Pebble Beach this year when I drove the Escalade V up. So I put about a thousand miles on it. Wow. Um, yeah, fun, fun car in some ways. I'll get to, I'll get to <laughs> how it actually is. But you know, it starts up and everybody whips around thinking it's like a Pagani or whatever. And like, no, it's a big white, uh, you know, <laughs> boat that just makes the loudest noise. And I, I asked Cadillac's engineers about it, and I was like come on you know and they're like well look it's the last exhaust system we'll ever do like this is it we're this is this is it we're we're electric from here here forward so we figured we got 18 feet to play with um and they just made the loudest vehicle i mean it's it's, it's insane do they add um, resonators and straight pipes kind of stuff like just- they just took the the ct 5 v blackwing exhaust and like lengthened it by four or five feet oh, so it's man. just loud no. it's just it's crazy um, I mean, are those like, oh, I was just gonna say real quick, like Ed Lowe, who I work with, he had it and he called me or texted me and was like, is there a way to turn off the the, the morning <laughs> loudness? And I was like, nope, all caps, like, it's just loud, you know. What was Ed's response after the nope? Nothing. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> He's not very communicative. So I was, I was like, uh, did he leave you hanging with the just the dots, the typing dots? Like no, but I was thrilled because I know that like his neighbors do get mad if he has a loud car and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so, gonna say, like, what happens to those engineers now? Like that's the last exhaust system. Do they just get pivoted to something else or do they gotta go oh, to, yeah. like who's still doing ice engines? Like they go no, no. over to uh to synthetic noise generation engineering. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a that's a huge thing, actually. But yeah, I mean, you know, EVs legally have to make some sort of noise, and like it's you know, you got to think about what a vehicle sounds like now. So, um, yeah, I don't know, but they're they'll they'll go do something. I mean, they're automotive engineers. So. <laughs> yeah, I just for whatever reason, job security came into my mind for exhaust engineers. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, I mean, the whole industry is rapidly changing, and, and and you know, OEMs aren't that worried, but it's like the suppliers. Like, man, if you're a valve or camshaft supplier, like, oh. uh oh, <laughs> you know, you got problems. You start calling aftermarket companies, being like, who can else can we supply to? Yeah. But it, it's, I mean, it, it really is a big thing. I mean, it's just like, you know, the number of parts that go into a car is going way down, except for the microchips is going way up, you know. Like, I just went on the um, launch of the Range Rover Sport. And uh, the head of uh, engineering for Land Rover, I think he said there's 120 modules, computers in the sport, and that they can do over-the-air updates to all 120. So they can change not only like, you know, uh, I don't know, the uh, uh, traction control setting or whatever, but they can change like the throttle map, or they can change the transmission shifting points, or they can change whatever, everything about the vehicle. Um, All over the air. Yes, all over the year. That is impressive. Um, yeah, it, it's it's cool. Like we we have a long term, or we had a long term defender, and, and like at one point there was wired car play, and then there was an update, and there was wireless car play. Just showed oh, up. Wow. Yeah. There's no hardware behind that. And it's just all software. Yeah, and it's. I mean, that's wow. one of the things I like best about you know the, I, I got a Rivian. Uh, I'm sure no one knows that, but if you know who I am, you know about it. <laughs> um, and it's, I love every month you get like, it's like a new present for your vehicle and it just does all this new cool stuff. Got one last night. Doesn't do that much that's cool in the new update, but um, it like, you know, there was, there's, there's camping mode showed up last month, which is super rad. Cause it like, you know, if you're, if, if you're parked at an angle, you hit camping mode and it levels out automatically. That's it turns off all it turns off all the interior sensors so that like the lights won't turn on and the fan won't start, you know, just because it knows, yeah, you're gonna be in and out of the truck all night. Um so not only can you use the, the headlights to flood, you know, to, as a light source, but on the on the mirrors, the turn signals on the mirrors, uh there's a white light and you can say, like, you know, flood, it's like a floodlight, like flood this way or flood that way or flood both. Um, and that's just new functionality that just showed up. That's Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And Tesla people have known about this forever. Problem is, like the you know the Tesla stuff's kind of fun, but usually it's like a video game or a fart noise or whatever. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's some cool functionality, but an, uh, an '80s or '90s movie ripoff thing. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean they, they did <laughs> yeah. actual usable I mean, stuff. I remember when the Model S came out though. There was some really cool stuff like like i remember and a lot of cars have this standard now but like uh, one day because we had a long-termer um and like you know uh it was it, it had air suspension so if there was a big dip you know you knew it was coming up by your house or whatever you'd like raise up the suspension right and then one day it just started doing it automatically because like wow. it, you know geofencing was added to the vehicle mm -hmm. and that was like that's cool like you know that was the first time we really noticed it like whoa yeah and then and then they could like, you know, I remember we had a um it was a model, I want to say it was a model X, and it was one of those weird deals where I they, you know they they never really sold many of them, but it was like like you get like the model X 60 or the 70, and, and that referred to the size of the battery, yeah. but it was the same battery, and it was just like you know, it was just it was software that made the 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 one smaller. And so we said, hey, we're testing it. Could you give us the bigger battery? And they're like, yeah, we're going to send you an update. And boom, we had a larger battery with more power. You know, That's and I mean, yes, a normal person would have had to pay for that. But hey, it's, it's all software. We've, we've seen that in a few ICE cars too, though, with just yep. turbo engines with slightly different tunes, you know, and put a new tune on it and it makes the same more power. 
Yeah, and I know Tesla on the Model Y and the Model 3, they had a thing where for, you know, whatever it was, 5,000 bucks, you could unlock like another 50 horsepower and from your phone. You just like, yes, you just pay them. And, uh, just 5Gs over the phone. Yeah, yeah but then you have a faster car, right? You know, like, isn't that better than like dropping your car off at a shop? And Yeah. You know, so. It's, that I is pretty know. neat. It's this whole new weird uh, software defined vehicles. That's like the, the new industry buzzword. That... Software defined vehicles. Huh. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. S uh S D V. It's the Wild West of where things are going. Not, if not looking, where things where we where they've been is the escalate thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's that's the thing, right? So well, real quick, if you if you look at like what OEMs are hiring or who they're hiring, it's all software engineers. Talk to anybody at any car maker, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, we just hired five thousand software engineers. Like, really? Five thousand? Like, yeah, five thousand. Um, but yeah, like the Escalade V, for instance, you know, um, cool car, 682 horsepower. Like that's pretty good, except, um, I I've been ruined by this Rivian of mine, but like, you know, it's like, okay, it's a lot of horsepower. And then, you know, they, it weighs 6,400 pounds, probably the, the big long Escalade V the, they used to call it the ESV. I think they dropped that because having the ESV V is a dumb name. Well, they screwed <laughs> up before because they called the Avalanche version the EXT. Yeah, and, I mean, and, was, yeah. Like yeah, but I think one, now it's just like the, the long wheelbase and the short wheelbase or whatever. You know, you, you know what you bought. It doesn't really matter if it's <laughs> a bad. But, you know, so it was, you know, you're in the you're in the Escalade, you got to pass somebody and you stomp on it and all of a sudden like this is weird like the the suddenly the 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 engine is declutched from the vehicle and like nothing's happening and then there's a shift and then it re-engages and you go forward and it's very loud, but it's not as quick as again, like uh, the Rivian, which has, uh, you know, so instead of 682 horses, 835 horsepower, instead of 650 pound feet of torque, it's 908 pound feet of torque. Jeez. Instant, no gears, no shifting. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's heavier too. Mass. It's, it's got to be what? It's like 1400 pounds heavier. On top of the Rivian, I believe, is 7,200 pounds. Um, I thought it was 8,200. No, it's 7,200. I'm almost, I'm almost, I, I okay. You, 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 you it, no. no, it's, it's 7,200. I mean, you know, the, according to our scale, because we, we weighed them, but 7,200 pounds. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's probably uh, six to 800 pounds heavier than the Cadillac, but it's just instant torque, more of it, more horsepower. Mm-hmm. And so I, I've been finding this like, I, you know, I have a, we have a long term T Rex. And again, it's like 700 and whatever horsepower, two or seven, I can't remember. Um, and it's very loud, well, not as loud as the Escalade, four times quieter than the Escalade, but like, it's just a weird sensation. If after I've driven the Rivian around, I get in the T-Rex, I'm like, it's so loud and so slow. I'm not, it's not so slow, but comparatively, um, you know, it, it, it it's slower. So I've, right. just, I've been ruined completely. And my whole point was like, GM makes the, the Hummer EV. You know, and like that's a thousand horsepower. So give me an Escalade with a thousand horsepower and and no shifting. Like that would be awesome. And it well, was silent, which... they're doing the uh, the Hummer EV SUV. Well, that look, we start seeing soon. You will start seeing that, but you're also going to see everything will be electric at GM within a few years. You know, and so there will be an Escalade with a thousand horsepower or more. Yep, that's electric. So Silverado EV. New Coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Coming soon. Massive. No, I, so so big. It's ridiculous. I saw it at New York. It was freaking huge. Like the the Chevy booth was right next to the Ford booth, obviously. And like yeah. the F two fifties and three fifties were the the grill and the hood line was lower than the Silverado EV. Yeah. Like, and you know, know. It's, we we had a couple we had a couple um lightnings at the office today. And, um, you know, they just look like F-150s, you yes. know, and um, and we had a Ram 2500. We actually had a power wagon um, and, you know, it's it's a big truck. But like unless I'm totally just I saw it in person, the 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 Silverado EV, like it just looks like a size bigger, you know, it's huge. It's, it's just honking. Yeah. I mean, so, it's the same platform as the Hummer, though. Right. Yeah. It's the um, okay. Ultium. Is it Ultium? Ultium? Yeah. Something Ultium. like Ultium. But. So yeah, I, I think it's longer than the Hummer. I it can't. And I, if it, I don't know if it's as wide, the Hummer is always quite wide. But yeah, um, it's crazy. But, but I, I totally get it about the, the EV stuff. I had a um, 
EV6 for a week. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. The base car, you know, with all wheel drive. And after that, getting in anything else was like, huh. So yeah. this is, it, it's just not the same. It's a totally different, even just going around the city, you know, I get it. Um, yeah, and then the other the other thing about the Rivian, and and I've I've ever really, I guess I did I drove the Jeep uh, four by E or whatever they call it, but like the Rivian off road man, it's such a game changer. It's just like mm-hmm. you realize very quickly, and I did a lot. I've done a lot of off roading, obviously in the Rivian, but also like in the T Rex and and big horsepower stuff, Jeep four uh, ninety two or no three ninety two three ninety two three ninety two. It makes 470 horsepower. Get my name. <laughs> um, you know, I've done that. And what you realize is like, okay, having a big thing spinning and it's like 3,500 RPM and you're trying to crawl. And so you reduce the gears by 88 times, but you're still like gas brake, gas brake, just to mm-hmm. creep forward mm-hmm. is really dumb compared to all four wheels have a motor that can move at like less than an RPM. It can move it yeah. like, you know, point, point, or sorry, point zero, zero, one RPM if you feed it in enough. And it has instant torque, it has, I'm sorry, peak torque at that non rotational speed. Does Rivian even quote a crawl ratio or do they just say it's like infinite? Because they, they torque they might each individually. Have, and... it's, it's sort of hard to get info out of them. I, I, I could ask. I, it, I feel like if I, I, I feel like I would have seen it if they talked about it, but it's just like, it's such a game changer. And, and, you know, and I, I, I took it mine. Um, well, I went off roading up in this place, rower flats, which, you know, it's, it's not uh, the Rubicon, but it's pretty good. There's some actual rock crawling and I've had, you know, like, like for instance, like, uh, uh, like a will, a super wilderness could not do it. Like it can't be done because you're crawling rocks. You got to have lockers um or well the Ruby doesn't have lockers. Range. it can, yeah, it can simulate range. a locker yeah um but i remember i had a i had a toyota uh forerunner trd pro good truck yep. and like struggled i, I got a, the, the <laughs> first part to get into the this one trail at rower flats i can't i don't know the name of the trail but it's like it's getting worse in the pandemic everyone's showing up and doing it all day and it's gotten worse but like that i got the toyota up but it, it took me like seven minutes I mean, it was really like Took a lot, backing in, backing out, um, and then yeah, and you can never, you know this, you can never tell how severe yeah, something exactly. is. Exactly, uh, never ever, ever by by looking at it. But that and, that looks fairly gnarly and steep, though. Yeah, it, this was very gnarly and steep. Th- this particular part, um, you could do it in most vehicle. Well, I, I won't get into it. My wife and kid were in the car. This picture, you can kind of see my wife's chin. Um, so, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. And th- there's just, there's just a couple parts that, um, you know, you, you really do need, again, in a, a regular thing, you need um, four low and, and locker. Oh yeah. And this is my, another great part. So, you know, when it's time to reinflate the tires, there's a built-in compressor in the back and so you can, you, you can see that plus and minus button. So you can program yeah. and say, fill it up to 45 PSI. And then you hit the pl- the play button there, and it just inflates it till it gets to the te- the the pressure you want. ARB, the guys who make the dual and twin compressors and ARB that everybody buys to install in the overlanding rigs, they saw that and they just like their hearts sank. <laughs> like, oh no, <laughs> OEMs are doing this now. <laughs> it's you no, know, it's just it's just crazy because like the way I was thinking of it is like when they were designing this thing. Oh yeah, this is. Um, I guess that was just me filling it back up, but I was also you can also it has an attachment for a bicycle, so I was filling up my kid's bike tire, and it's like it's actually easier than like getting digging something out of the garage and hooking it up to your battery, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, but uh, um, you know, it's like I think what Rivian did, I'm not 100% sure, but they're like, okay, if somebody buys a Jeep and they go off roading, like what, what mods do they really do, right? And I think they just kind of like put them all in and it's just like, they do a lift, you know? Um, so this can go up to 15 inches of ground clearance. The standard Wrangler Crazy. is like 11 point whatever. Um, and that's the standard ride height in a Rivian is 11.1. It can go up to 15 and go down to nine something. Um, uh, you know, they get, a, they get a compressor, has a built-in compressor. 
Um, you know what I mean? So, and, and then the other thing that's really Smart. neat about it, which no one talks about, is that is an option. It's 2000 bucks, but you can get this piece of armor plating on the bottom. And it's like it's like Kevlar and ceramic. And I think, oh, it doesn't make a difference. One engineer is like, it is bulletproof. Don't say that. But, you know, but it, but it's the whole bottom. <laughs> There's nothing hanging down, right? Yeah. The only thing is a, the lower control arm is the only thing that's mm-hmm. below the armor plating. And just that's that's physics. Um, and, but it's like, you know, if you bang on a rock, I mean, it's a the giant armor plating and you know what I mean? Like there's, and, and there's no oil pan, there's no, right. like, you know, like hose, there's no line, there's no. So they took tool. everything that Hummer did with the H1 <laughs> and sort just of. adapted it to an EV platform to keep yeah. everything popping out of the way and totally flat because that's the perfect model for it. Yes, now the, the H1, the H1 was, uh, was 16 inches of ground clearance. So the Rivian's only 15. Um, I wonder if you could put portals on an EV. You you could. Huh. Uh, I mean, you know, just, just to increase smart. your ground clearance yeah. even more. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, you 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 technically you could put them on anything. You know. Yeah, I mean. Um, so Johnny, I ran into the the SUV version at Overland Expo Mountain West. Uh, uh-huh. They Rivian brought it out, and I think it, it was in the Dometic booth right next to us. Um, yep. And it was the first time I'd seen the SUV in person. And I've seen I've seen Rivian trucks in town now. They've made it all the way to truck country, actually. Um, <laughs> and like, there's a the, number the of big, them. I mean, hang on real quick. They're, 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 I think the number two market for Rivian pickups is Colorado, which maybe you don't consider that truck country, but I think Coloradans do. No, but, I would definitely put them in there. Yeah. But the, <laughs> Colorado yeah. is the number one place for, uh, for display for Texas right now. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It. definitely but uh i i love the size of them it's a it's yeah it's a it's a it's a great size and that and, and again that's the other thing so okay they looked at what jeep people do but then they also looked at like pickup trucks as a species and they said okay there's an arms race taking place with the domestics and it's just size like bigger 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 no thinking about it and if you come out smaller then you're, you know, like, you know, it's just, it's, uh, pardon my French, it's just it's dick measuring and like, you got 100%. a small dick at that point. And then Toyota's, Toyota's like, well, we also have a big dick. Uh, <laughs> here's the new Tundra. It's really big. It's 11 miles a gallon. And it's we got rid of the V8. It's not no. good. I love Toyota. The new Tundra is just not a, uh, I, not a home run. I, it's not a home run. I, the Tundra is fine in a vacuum, but like, I can't think of exactly. You know, I'm not, I'm not even the biggest F-150 fan, and I can't think of a reason why you'd buy a Tundra over an F-150. You know, even even EcoBoost to twin turbo V6, EcoBoost to EcoBoost. Because you love Toyota and nothing can break that. That's it. Yeah, you know, and then and then you look at like the Chevy and get a V8, you know, Ram V8. It's like, what, what the hell are you doing with this? Yeah. Really anemic, also like... Now I haven't driven the hybrid. I, I I should qualify that. I don't know what the hybrid um Toyota's like. I, the hybrid Ford is awesome. Like what a what a neat vehicle. Um the lightning's cool and all that. But anyways, but so so Rivian was like, okay, and then we look at like the Tacoma class, like you know, the Rangers barely developed. It's a non-US market car. They're trying to foist off as an American product. Um, you know, the, the Chevys, you know, in my opinion, are, are really nice and all, but like simple um and 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 pretty tiny um and, and yeah and and so they they looked at, they just found like a white space in the market and like by the way it's a market that buys i don't know two and a half million pickup trucks a year so there's a lot of room in this market and they they nailed the size they just they, they just i don't know it's 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 an impressive like See? mechanically i'm i'm really impressed by the thing so they've said that the next vehicle they're doing is like a scaled down version of the R1S, right? It'll be like a three quarter size SUV. Have they said anything about a truck on that same? So here's like, here's scale? what I know. So so the next four vehicles they well, I shouldn't say the next, but four vehicles they're going to do is the um, the R2T and the R2S. So it'll be Perfect. a a yeah seven H three quarter size. Then they're going to do an mm-hmm. R3 version of both and that'll be much smaller um so 
yeah, they would they would go they would have a two row version of the SUV. They'd have a smaller um, kind of probably Tacoma sized truck because because mm-hmm. it's that's what's funny about the R one T is it's like it is bigger than a Tacoma. It's actually you know it's actually it's a wide vehicle. It's eighty one inches wide. So like a Defender Land Rover Defender one ten is seventy nine inches wide. Um, you know, Tundra's you, yeah. what, what's that? The Tundra's eighty. I was say sequoias are 80 yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah so you know what I mean? so it, it's not a small vehicle it's bigger it's bigger than a tacoma so they're gonna do a tacoma size and they'll do a maverick size they also have something called the r x s coming or something and it'll be like a like a raptor type thing that'll have it'll have four oh. of their motors they're you know so so my truck has four motors but it's off the shelf motors. I've, I've somebody just told me who makes them and it's a weird company that makes them, but, and, you know, combined the four make 835 horsepower, their new motor can make 300 a piece. So combined you'd have 1200 horsepower. So imagine like a 1200 horsepower electric Raptor type thing. Oh my Jesus. gosh. And and then, this, oh, go ahead. It's probably all going to land like right at the same, or at least the, the R2 and S and T will be here at the same time that Jeep Recon is going to start showing up. The, no, the it was Jeep will be here b- before that. No, I, so. I, I thought they yeah, like twenty five ish. Oh, maybe, maybe Rivian's pretty behind the eight ball. Like they still have to do a two motor version of the truck and SUV that hasn't happened yet. They still have to do the max battery pack hasn't happened yet. Oh. Um, they, they're they're you know they're um they're going to do a consumer van. So they're making those vans for Amazon. Yeah. Um, they're going to do a consumer version, uh, which will, you Smart. know, yeah, there'll, there'll be an off-road version of it. It'll be overlandy and all that. And you can put a massive so battery. Yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be cool. Good. But yeah, so the, the R2s and I mean, I haven't even seen prototypes anywhere or even, I have a lot of, um, oh, let's just say friends. That, uh, <laughs> they, they spend. Yeah. They, I have friends that spend time in like Minnesota and New Zealand and, um, you know, parts of parts of Africa and parts of Sweden where they see everything, and you know they 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 tell me what's what, um, like so like they for instance they've seen the Lucid SUV but they haven't seen the smaller Rivians because they don't exist yet. Okay. Uh, they're not even testing them yet. So. Didn't know Lucid was doing that SUV. Oh yeah, it's called the gravity. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, the air, and then the next one's elusive gravity. Cool. Um, so it'll be, yeah, it'll be thousand horsepower uh SUV, uh, based on the same architecture and and all that. And Will it, it be, seat six? Uh, I think four or five. I don't know if it's gonna be a three row. <laughs> Lucid. The thing about Lucid, which everyone get, doesn't get, is that they just want to be like. They really, I'd say a Mercedes competitor, but like high end Mercedes competitor. They just want to be, they just want to be a luxury brand. They don't, they don't want, they're never going to do like volume. You know, they're just like, you know, they're, they're, you know, they, they're currently selling a $180,000 car and they just launched a $250,000 car. You know, so not, Ross, not, have you seen this before? Uh, no. That's the first I've seen it. I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> well, that's not it. That's a uh, that's a that's that's somebody else's render. Dang it! Um, now I will cool. say this. I will say this. Hang on, hang on. Go go back to that. Go back to that. Go. Back. Uh, I'll show you the parts okay. that are real. Okay. So, all right. Um, the parts that are real. Uh, so okay. The the Lucid Air has a giant like kind of clamshell rear end. So if let's just. I think I think the the lighting on the actual gravity will wrap around more, but it'll be more of a clamshell kind of tailgate. Okay. It's kind of the brand signature. The one thing they got right here, and I know I know what they did. They took these really dark renderings that um, that Lucid put out, and they kind of had a designer like render what they think. But you can see how the A pillar looks really kind of weird. But if you could look at the base of the A pillar there, the way it hits is accurate. It, it is going to look like that. Okay. Put the um, wraps around the side beneath the window line. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's a funny connection, and then um, it'll I, it'll have better wheels than that. But yeah, I mean this is this is all right, but it ain't uh, it ain't it. 
What do you think of the new Range Rover styling? Because I had a first edition dropped off today, and I'm having having some trouble with the uh, the tail light. Yeah, that's the weak part of the Range Rover is the tail. Um, uh, I think that they're in, I, I, I call it the polishing icons uh, phase of their design, where it's like the Range Rover has achieved 911 uh, ubiquity. You, you don't even need badges on it. You look at it. You know it's a Range Rover. Why reinvent that? Why, why waste that? All you got to do is just make it the next one slightly better looking than the current one. And I, th- I think they achieved that. I agree there's a problem with the the tail of the Range Rover. The real good one, though, is the Range Rover Sport. And if, um, if uh, Chris, you can, if you look, you keep pulling up my Instagram. If you look at like probably like seven posts ago, there's a red Range Rover Sport. The rear end of this thing or the hard side of this thing is like, yeah. And now it. Yeah, I, look, here, here my take is I always like I, I, the last one specifically was like, OK, this feels like if you cost cut a Range Rover, you get to the sport, right? You're just pulling money out. Aha. Yeah. Uh-huh, boom. I've got, I've got to the sport. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Because this not one droopy. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's this good. one is like, hey, baby, like I'm just a sportier version of a Range Rover. I've, yeah, I've got the same BMW V8. And if you if you click through, I think there's a few pictures here. I might have like a hard rear, um, or even the side, but yeah, maybe not the hard rear. But yeah, it just I think it's just a super fantastic, gorgeous looking vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah, I'm there. It I, is. I, I think, yeah, that's yeah. freaking nice. Oh my god. So I think that's and, and, and a couple of things to point out. Let me point out a couple of things. So um, you got to have a lot of confidence as a design house. To black out the word Land- Range Rover, so and say that. the batch is blacked out. Yeah, yeah. So that means they know if you see this, you go, "Oh, look at that Range Rover." You don't, you mm-hmm. don't need, you know what I mean. Yep. So I, I think that's cool. Also, if you look at the shark's fin on top, notice there's two. Um, and I, I was asking, like, why do you have two antennas now? You know, like, what's wrong with one? And just because of those over-the-air updates we were talking about, they can change 120 parameters of this vehicle remotely uh, they're like look our customers do go weird places and so that's a mo- one of those is like a full <laughs> modem what? Uh, like a satellite link or something so it, it looks me like yeah so the idea fences. is like you'll always be able to get the update you know so and it's just <laughs> it, it drives fantastic it's actually sporty they actually um unlike the last gen, there's a different steering rack uh so it's actually it actually is is or at least maybe not a different rack i shouldn't say that but it's a uh, the the E pass is tuned radically differently. It's much mm-hmm. beefier on the sport. Um, so yeah, they I I really like it. Man, fast yeah. sporty SUVs are such like it's not even guilty pleasure because they've gotten to just be good. Like mm-hmm. I had a um, the F Pace SVR for a week, uh-huh. which also to talk about unnecessarily <laughs> loud vehicles. Good oh, God, that thing is yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. what like just a great car like i got 20 miles per gallon on a road trip in it you know and and on the back road like we have a couple you know local back roads that we take to go to cars and coffee and you know say what you will about driver speed and pace and competence and whatnot but i kept up with the cayman no problem you know Um, yeah no it's uh, it's impressive they're they're impressive cars you know and it's yeah i mean we just did a thing with the the you know the, the the real extreme end of it uh, we have the Porsche uh, uh, Cayenne Turbo GT and the the Aston DBX 707, mm. and it's like it's just ludicrous what they what they can do with SUVs. Like, yeah, and yeah, they're they're both five thousand pounds, but um, yeah, there it is. Can't There's reveal the winner, but here <laughs> I got a fun one for you. If you look at these two vehicles, which one do you think weighs more, and how much more does it weigh? I bet it's the Porsche. And I want to say it's like 150 pounds. You got you got the about 150 pounds is correct, but no, the Aston, the Porsche actually <laughs> snuck under the 5,000 pound barrier. Really? Yeah, this one's like 49.30, I think I want to say. Uh, the Aston's like 51 something. Um, but it's funny because like we had another Turbo GT that was a little over 5,000 because because for me the the my still my favorite I think. Uh, favorite super SUV is the Urus, 
And that's everyone we've ever tested is always a little bit under 5,000. Hmm. And this particular one crept under 5,000. And it's just, you know, it, it's it literally it's leather. You know what I, I mean? It's like, or it probably had like Alcantara seats instead of leather seats and it saved a hundred pounds or something. It's funny uh, that we're, uh, we're nudging up on the, the make it just under 5,000 pound limit because yeah. you know, we're talking about like going crazy over civic SIs and, and BRZs coming in at, you know, just under three. And here we are, you know, different. It's kind of hard. Fun, it, but, look, look, it's hard to make a vehicle that a human being can survive a crash in that doesn't weigh 3000 pounds at least. Yeah. Uh, it's, and not it's be hard. from demolition man. Yeah. Uh, it's hard, you know, with, uh, like, I love EVs, but like, God, batteries are just heavy. Yeah. yeah. It's just back to life, you know? And um, yeah, I hope they get lighter, but they're just, you know, they're just heavy. Um, and, and it's a problem, you know, it's, a, it's, it's a problem that said, I was just up in uh, Heffel, England, where, where the Lotus headquarters is. And um, the, I saw that thing, the Avira, which is okay. their 2.2 million pound, as in, you know, British money, pound sterling, <laughs> uh, 2,000 horsepower electric hypercar. And it's like, I actually saw the first production version being screwed together. And like, oh my God, is it wild? And uh, like, it's got a 93 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it's Jeez. like, it's, but it's like, they did everything they could to lightweight the thing because like, I don't know if you've ever seen like, uh, like McLaren's like their carbon fiber tub. So it's like, just basically the passenger cell is uh, carbon fiber. And then you bolt an aluminum subframe onto the front and the rear. Right. And you could, I've picked it up. I mean, it weighs about 140 pounds. Um, that's what the, that tub weighs on the, on the, the Lotus um it's it's a much bigger cell i think they said it weighs about 125 kilograms so like 200 and, you know 80 pounds whatever that is um and, it, but like so the, the 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 little bit of aluminum you do bolt on is just like the crash beams mm -hmm. so the, but like the structure like most of the car is only like you know less than 300 pounds so you, you, they are putting this massive battery pack in, but you know, I don't, I still don't know how much the actual thing weighs, but it's like cuckoo pants uh, looking and like the tech is, <laughs> it's just funny. Like I was looking at it and cause I had the skin off of it and I'm like, I'm like, Oh, those are, it's not, it's not like, Oh, those are nice looking carbon ceramic brakes. I'm like, those are F1 brakes. Like I've been to the Brembo factory. I know what <laughs> F1 brakes look like. And like, that's yeah, awesome. we're just gonna use F1 brakes. Oh, basically, you know, they're a little bigger. They're scaled up, but it's the same. The gloves are off. Scaled. What's that? The gloves are off in the uh, in the you know, EV hyper I mean, hyper car world. I, like, it's nuts. Like you know, and then I saw some video of uh, like they had it in rear drive mode. So you know, rear drive means it's only a thousand horsepower, um, and it was just doing a massive burnout. Just like, <laughs> burnout. Yeah, this thing, right? No, that's the. No, Amira. it's the. Yeah. This is, oh my god! This is the. It's called the Avira. Why that do they have such weird names? Baby little AMG engine. <laughs> if if you do, I just drove the Amira. Actually, it's quite good. Um, if you name everything with an E, you know, you run out of names eventually. Is it the? Uh, it's so E V I J A. Yeah, Avicha. Maybe that's. I, I should know no, the name. No, Avicha or Avicha, whatever. Avicha, that was a Cadillac Cadillac or, or Holden concept or something. I, I can't remember, but I think this is it just because it looks crazy. Yes, yes. that's it. Yes, yeah, okay. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's kooky. For the audio yeah. listener, think of a futuristic supercar, and that's what it looks like. It looks like yeah. a Hennessy and a yes, like a, a Koenigsegg more yeah. one. And it's and, and all the arrows, so they didn't want to put a giant wing on it. So all the arrows underneath, and the the diffuser goes like all the way forward. It does, I forget how much downforce, like 2,000 pounds of downforce, but it's all under the car, like the Aston Martin Valkyrie. Oh, so, I just walked in, and I, like they just had one sitting there, like it was on a, it was on a, uh, like a rack, the wheels were off, and all the, all the body panels were off, sitting next to it, and it was just like, holy shit. Like, so, yeah. how long is it going to take for somebody to, or, or one of these companies, be it, you know, Koenigsegg or, or someone like, um, Glickenhaus, who's only you know ten miles from me, to do the full sucker fan underneath, like that car that ran uh, 
that ran. Oh, it's already off. happened. It's Is already it? the uh, yeah the the, the GMA Gordon Murray automobile. Yeah, the Gordon Murray one. Yeah, the oh, fifty has a, has a fan. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Well, I have but, to pay him a visit because he's but like. The oh, the right fan the fan like is kind of uh useless in the face of modern aerodynamics. So for instance, the Aston Martin Valkyrie, which does uh I forget like 1900 pounds of downforce, all underbody, all underbody, oh. 1900 pounds of downforce at you know 180 miles an hour. They can tune it so it does two tons of downforce, and they were doing that in the wind tunnel, and all the tires blew out. So, like, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so they said, Oh, we'll dial it back to like 2,000 pounds instead of 4,000 pounds. Cursed, yeah, that, that car is supposed to be uh, like, I got a ride yeah. in, the, in the race car version of it, and like, yeah, no, it's there's nothing like, like everything yeah. else. Everything else doesn't matter at all. Like that's it's just the next, 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 next level. I don't know who's gonna buy it. I don't know what you're gonna do with it when you buy it, but it's like it's a it's a yeah. I, yeah, I will put it in the warehouse with everything else that I own. Yeah, with, with all three hundred other cars. <laughs> yeah. You, know? you know the wild thing? If you look at look at this picture and for people listening, the, the rear wing, so the, the streetcar doesn't have a rear wing, it just does underbody arrow. Um, on this one, there's a front and a rear wing, and that rear wing, you see how it like curves and starts pointing down. Mm -hmm. It it the angle changes radically, so it's still producing. I don't understand it, but vertical downforce, even though it's like curved and tapering down like that, because to get the downforce they would have wanted with a wing, it would have stuck out another like 18 inches per side. <laughs> and they didn't want that, so they figured Adrian Newey figured out how to curve it down. And still produce downforce or something. Some, just the thing is absurd. It was like, I, I I just never had an experience like that. And I've done a lot. I mean, I've driven like, you know, a, a, a Pagani Wire R, you know, all kinds of wackadoodle million dollar stuff. And this was what I imagined an LMP1 racer is like. That, just, that's what it looks like. That's it's what just, they're, the companies are starting to go for. I mean, the, the Mercedes AMG, what was it? Yeah. AMG1. AMG1. An actual yeah, well, this F1 one engine yeah this this one this Aston was you know is built to be in the uh the hypercar class at Le Mans and then they changed the rules and it became like a, a combo IMSA uh Le Mans thing uh FIA um well, I'm saying it all wrong whatever they changed the rules <laughs> I mean, yeah the, the yeah. people who know that about racing know yeah about uh, there's two guys who are like you're an idiot but, yeah but um hi Greg it, <laughs> yeah but supposedly that car, and again, I haven't seen it, but that, that car, that that Aston can lap Cirque du Sarth, which is the Le Mans track, eight mile track in three minutes, 19 seconds, which is like, the I think the lap record's like 317 you know, for like the Porsche 919 or whatever. Yeah. Wasn't it running like 115s at Laguna? Oh, with like Matt Farah in the car, yeah, like two hundred fifty <laughs> yeah. pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I shouldn't. I weigh two hundred fifty pounds too. I'm, I'm I'm actually heavier than Matt, but he just looks bigger. Um, but yeah, no, it was like and 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 they had it set to eight hundred horsepower, not a thousand horsepower. You know, I mean, it's just like, That's but crazy. speed isn't that what's crazy about the thing. It's the braking and the turning. It's it's just like what you know, like 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 I had to sit like this uh, for people listening. That's with my left hand gripping my right shoulder because the driver needed elbow room <laughs> and um I'm sitting like this and my 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 right hand is just basically like this pointed forward and there's nothing to grab onto so i'm just I, and you're you know you're five point harnessed in so i'm sitting like this with my fingers out and when he hit the first brake zone i remember like oh wow i can feel all my blood pooling mm. in my fingertips that's so <laughs> odd and before I finished the thought, it was like a hard right and then blasting out at a speed. You couldn't even, it just, the, the first time he turned in, because uh, he did one lap where, I, you know, it wasn't full, it was a warm up lap. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is a really neat car. I've experienced this before. Second lap, he does this turn in and it just, I like, I've crashed a lot of cars and I'm like, oh, we're crashing. This is what a crash is. We're crashing. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sensation. It's like, okay, I don't know if you ever like spun off a track. When you spin yeah. off a track, you're out of control. The car's doing going in a direction you don't think it should be, and you just kind of hang on and ride it out. And that's when it's, 
The guy had it, you know. Oh. It was wild. It was That's, just totally, totally wild. Sounds like a great way to end up puking all over a very expensive interior. Nah, I don't puke. I'm not a puke. <laughs> I'm not a puker. It was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, but, but you know, I mean, Pharaoh was much more hardcore about it. But I remember just getting out and being like, "What would you do with this? Like, you'll never <laughs> have the skills necessary to do what that. Anything less, you're, you know, the car is asleep." I don't know, dude. I, I I was talking to the guys that dropped off the Range Rover today. Like a one LE Camaro. Like I don't think I could drive a one LE Camaro ten tenths on a tight track. You know, like a Laguna. And yeah, I have no shame saying that. But we're talking about actual real race cars that yeah. could be you know like plated now. It's just it's freaking no. It's it's, it's mad. crazy. It's it's crazy. I mean, you know, it's like I, I get it. You know, and you always want to go faster and faster. And at some point, you know, your vehicle limited. Like I, I experienced this, and again, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't that competitive. But I, I did Pikes Peak this year, um, and uh, you know, it's like, boy, uh, that my four hundred horsepower GT four like was really sucking wind. Like I could really use a turbocharger <laughs> right now. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh so yeah so I, I i get it and you can have a lot of fun you know and, and again a camaro you know ss1 le bitching car and you can you know i don't know about 10 tents but i've taken it on some tracks and laguna actually i drove in laguna is really great you know terrific car yeah yeah they're they're crazy crazy yeah. good for, uh, for <laughs> under underappreciated car for sure it really yes. is a good car. um speaking I, of go ahead chris i'm assuming you're gonna talk about pike's peak right I could. I mean, it's, it's, it was. There's my car. Uh, <laughs> there's the know. snow. What's that one? There's the snow. See that up there, dear. Well, forget about the snow. You're looking at. You know, I'm on top of a fourteen thousand one hundred fifteen foot tall mountain, and there's, you know, twenty seven feet of visibility because of the the fog. Yeah, that was rough. And that was sadly the story of the hundredth running of Pikes Peak. Was just like couldn't see the track. Um, so yeah. everybody was two minutes off their best time. I feel like it's a perfect example of what the hundredth running should be because it's the mountain just saying, forget yeah. you. I don't care. Yeah. Here's the fog. Here's nothing. Like it was, it was crazy. I mean, it was, it was, it was great to make it to the top. Um, and, and, you know, I, my imposter syndrome was like redlining the whole time, but, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm with like, you know, Rod Millen, Reese Millen, uh, uh, Jeff Swart, um, you know, David Donner, David Donahue, Randy Popes, all these guys with like, you know, that's David uh, Donner's car right there. Um, you know, like uh, over a hundred years of experience between them. And, um, you know, all of them are like sour, pissed off and going like, yeah, we've never seen it this bad. I mean, just, just look at the fog. Oh, wait, pause on that car for a second. Yeah. So that is my buddy. He was in my class. It's my buddy, uh, Cam Ingram. Um, of the the Ingram famous Ingram family, uh, they're you know they're uh, uh, as in the magazine like in publishing like Ingram. No, oh, okay. No. <laughs> oh, it could be. It could be. They, they um, God, I'm blanking on what it's like. Roadshow Autos or something. Okay. Anyway, they, they have a big collection. His dad is the nicest man in the world. They have a huge collection of cars down in Florida somewhere. Um, which are, and it's mostly it's all like really cool, air cooled like. You know, 550 spiders. They just they just won their class at Pebble this year with the 550 awesome. spider. Yes. Um, but anyways, Cam was in my class and he turned in a performance for the ages because again, at, at where this car is sitting at 14,115 feet, it's making 252 horsepower. And he was like 11th overall. Um, I was like 59th. I came in fourth in my class, by the way. He was just first. He just ran the, the greatest race. That's cookie. Ab absolutely insane. Like the, the number of cars he beat was like, it, it's, it's shocking. And like what he beat. And, you know, um, this was, uh, this was uh, the conditions we ran in. Cause this is, I just got to the top. I sat in my car for five minutes. I probably did a, like a five minute interview and I was just out taking pictures. So like, this is how much visibility you had. And you had, you know, like 1,800 foot drops all over the place. It looks like the inside of his windshield is fogged. Not the outside, well, but it looks like the inside is fogged. It was. I mean, this this is what happened to Randy Popes. So I don't know if you heard the story, but, yeah, uh, you know, Randy was, was going to win his class. David Donner wound up winning the open class. 
with that that 911 Turbo S right there. Yeah, go go back. Uh, the zero zero zero. Yeah. Okay. And then go forward to. So like that's Triple Randy. Zero magazine. Yeah. Uh, other way. Sorry. The other way. Sorry. 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 So Randy was in the Tesla Plaid, and he was um, he was faster in the first section. He was faster in the middle section. He had been way faster in practice, but when we got to the top section here, his windshield fogged up. Didn't know where the defroster was on the Tesla. Didn't uh-huh. know, it, you know in the screen. It's in the screen. <laughs> so he had to like loosen his belt, lean forward, and wipe off the windshield with his gloves. Whereas Donner Sorry. just like hit the defrost button and yeah. beat, you know. And so I didn't sit with Randy for six hours with him going like, God damn it, I, my race was twice as bad. <laughs> Did anybody ask Lauren Healy if the fog had something to do with him just going off? Or was that like, he rolled and got and landed oh, on his wheels? At, no, no, uh, Levi uh, Shirley. Oh, it was Levi Shirley. In the, uh, um, it was like an Ultra 4 car. Uh, yeah, and the Ultra Four off road buggy. Oh, 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 oh. Well, uh, look, I, I, I should, I, I met him. I, I, I mean, I watched that GoPro. He was, you couldn't have entered that turn in a worse position. <laughs> like, he, he, okay. well. he, there's no way he could have not crashed. That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That you explains be, that. You need to be all the way to the right <laughs> side of the road, and he was all the way to the left. Mm-hmm. Like, he basically, where he, started to turn was like already the apex he should have already been like halfway through the turn when he started it yeah so my favorite part is we've had him on the show a couple of times and then that happened i was like well that's we need probably need to get back on yeah uh yeah i mean if you if you back up this video um it's just a still sorry (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, i think probably would be a lot of fun to run the mountain though yeah i mean he was i practiced with him i mean he was he looked like i mean you just pay attention to yourself but um, hey, but you know what, guys? I got to go. No, uh, you're good. I was about yep. to ask you, what do you want to okay, plug? My, my wife just sent me a text like, I got to leave. So, uh, so obviously, at Johnny Lieberman. Yeah, Instagram. Just you want to know what I'm up to, just just Instagram. And then uh, we, uh, The Inevitable. Yeah, we've got a podcast on Motor Train called The Inevitable. Got another podcast, uh, Spikes Car Radio. We're broadcasting live from Little <laughs> Nice two, two or three days. Um, and you know, motor trend, but it, it's all on Instagram. Just go to my absolutely. Instagram. I saw that uh that Lynn's running the Zuckerman head on her yes. Bell rallies helmet there. So <laughs> yes, so yeah, the Zuckerman head, Scott Dixon, uh, the Frankini brothers, Jimmy Johnson, and now her. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> anyway, sweet. I got a lot of boys. Cool, you're good. A lot of fun all right, all thanks, Johnny. Okay, see you next You bounce and I'll wrap it up. All right, Chio. Yeah. Gracias, Later. sir. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the awkward you say goodbye to somebody and then you both end up walking the same way <laughs> it's the zoom ver- it's the zoom I'll version s- of that. i will see you later